Do you have a name for the sheep? She was called uh, Susie. We've a great surprise. Bring out the sheep. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Dark Artist series. Today we are very honoured to have with us as our guest Finnish Gothic rock icon Villa Vallo. Villa, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I look so healthy the next year. <laughs> oh, nice you, you got the right, the right shade of pale. <laughs> the Irish weather. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, yeah, it can't must say. be touring, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Spring came out in Europe, so <laughs> that's the reason. How are you doing? How's the oh, tour? You know, I'm getting that. You know, I think it's the 25th, 26th show now, mm -hmm. including three that we played in Helsinki when the album came out in January the 13th. Yeah, we saw the so, giant heart around there. It was oh, really cool. Yeah, yeah. We're having that same thing everywhere on the, yeah. on the tour. Oh. The lighting, lighting thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks cool. We can change the colors and do all sorts. You know, I grew up with listening to Kiss and they always had that logo mm. with the light bulbs. That's why I wore this dress with all the colors. We're going to get a colour for once instead yeah, of the black, yeah. match the album, you know. That's excellent. It's the most colour I have. <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's all going well, you know, it's quite so... It's uh, very surreal for me, personally, I've been away for quite a long time and then, then also having a completely a new band. It's weird yeah. because I, the, the only band I've basically ever had was him. Mm -hmm. So playing some hymn tracks with the new lads and all that, there's a lot of... It's like a weird sort of back to the future combination, you know, like mm. in the present, in the future, in the past at the same time, there's a, you know, a tinge of nostalgia and, and uh, something a bit more present happening at yeah. the same time. You know, so I'm not quite sure what to think of it. It feels very unreal. You know, as, as you, at times, you know, when stuff, 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 stuff feels a bit dreamlike, you know, mm -hmm. it's weird. Is it really happening or not? So then. And then you think when you get home, it's going to hit you, and then it just doesn't, and you're like, oh, that happened too. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, think so. I get that. Yeah, but it's, uh, I'm not complaining whatsoever. Things have been going really well, and people have been. All sold out? Most of it, yeah. yeah. And, um, For the UK, yeah. Yeah, and there was only like, I think there was two gigs that weren't sold out in, in Europe, like 40 tickets. Yeah. Um, out of these being a sell out. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, and people have been enjoying the music, you know, the, the combination of doing a lot of heat tracks and new mm -hmm. stuff. So you can, you can never never tell in advance, you know, where people's yeah. heads are, and especially after COVID and, you know, it's been many, many Yeah, like years. are people still going to shows and uh, all that? Yeah, people actually aren't going to shows. Same as people are not going out uh, eating, you know, for dinners or whatever, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, that's not happening. At least, not, not in Finland, not in Europe as much, you've been talking to a lot of people, so. Obviously, a lot of build up to your debut solo album, Neon Noir. So now that it's finally out in the world, what's it like seeing the real life reactions to the album from crowds? Oh, I might refer to the uh, previous answer in a way that it's, it's very, it's very surreal. Mm -hmm. because, um, because the album's quite personal. The music should be always very personal, but because it was, uh, it, I built the whole thing by myself. During COVID, so, so um, it's like reading your diary over. Yeah, yeah kind of. Yeah, like yeah, like some sort of flashing. So sort of like, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what, what I'm looking for here, but, uh, but yeah. it's a, it's a, I don't think it's just the album, but it's it's the combination with the hymn tracks. Mm -hmm. It's interesting for me. I think psychologically, mm -hmm. to play the same you know, no, I'm play one line at the grace. You know, this is the span of thirty years or or twenty five years or whatever, and uh, and. There's so, much, there's so many similarities to the stuff from way back when, which is quite endearing, I find. You know, this, that the sort of, whether you like it or not, the musical identity has been there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. You know, Zebra and its stripes and however you want to put it, you know, so. So, um, so and, I, I, and I do feel that Neil Noir is a sort of transitional moment. You know, it's like, I don't know where, where it's going, mm -hmm. no idea musically or whatever, or if it's going anywhere, but I had to do something. So, have you What's noticed like a fan favorite when performing from the new album? Um, um, no, Probably the no, title track. No, no, really. I think uh, Run Away from the Sun has been one that people like. Yeah, I think that was the first one that we heard that yeah, came it, out, wasn't it? And it came out in 2020, yeah. that little EP. So yeah, that was amazing. Time. At the time when that came out, things were like, you know, we were just coming into lockdown and things were very really bad, and then yeah. like, 
Oh, a new song. The like, same thing when, when, we, when we uploaded it to the title of Spotify and whatever systems, you know, it, it always takes a few weeks, so we didn't know that the lockdowns would start, and it happened yeah. on the same same week. It kind of gave lockdowns. people hope, though, you know, like new music and then a future for touring and like yeah. everything like that. So uh, and, and, was... and appreciation and gave, gave hope for me to sort of like keep on going. Mm -hmm. this is, you know, it seemed that there was a few record labels who were interested in distributing the stuff and putting it out. And then it seemed that there were still people into the idea of me working working in the realm of music. It's tough because him was such a you know um, sort of a close knit unit. So mm. it's tough to say what's what. You can't just tear the songs out of the, the equation or whatever. So I think that was the scariest part. It's like I know that I can strum the guitar and come up with a couple of melodies, but will it be satisfactory mm -hmm. uh, for myself and for, okay. for the listeners? And hopefully have some sort of unique thing going on that it's not just a, you know... I think it's uh, unique, but it still has the elements, well, some yeah, elements. Yeah, yeah because I've wrote all the hymn songs. So, know, of course, yeah. Because yeah. 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 people were a bit like, oh, I hope I'm going to like it, and, you oh, know, yeah. uh, what's completely different, but, you know, it's unique on its own, but then it does, it's still like... It's a bit more new, maybe a bit more goth. That's, that's basically... That's what we were going to ask about, actually. So, like, as far as, like, goth goes, and, like, really listening to a lot of goth bands at the time, or, like... I've always been listening to quite, yeah. quite a bit, very early on, and that's how we gelled with John Fryer when working on Razorblade Romance, which is quite a weird sounding album for, mm -hmm. for the time. And that was when I was listening to like Manuscript and um, and the night we recording stuff from Nottingham, mm -hmm. like uh, whatever the uh, Suspiria and my love, the uh, dance floor tragedy. The, 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 they're so tough to get. I got actually um, a few cassettes of the original prints. Oh, wow. Well. That's very cool. Yeah. And, um, but anyway, so I was listening to a lot of that stuff at that time, and that was time for the internet. Yeah. Uh, it was in the like, um, yeah, 98 or whatever. And you always listen to like Sisters of Mercy and yeah. Typo Negative and like... Yeah, but well. Typo was always, uh, that was so like, uh, that was important for the whole band, I guess. You know? Yeah. So, it was, uh, there was something we could agree on. That's uh, cool. Regarding, you know, musically, with Typo having so many different sort of facets, you know. Yeah, so I understand, because being in a band with a lot of different people and everybody has their own like yeah. the way they want to go and it's good yeah. if you have a mutual agreement on like one sound that you do like. Yeah, just like one Sabbath and, and uh, Oh Sabbath, uh, yeah of course. Yeah. They, were very, they were very important. I was telling Connor when you were in Dublin I think you covered maybe, I think you covered a Sabbath song that night. Yeah, yeah, well, we yeah played, Black uh, Sabbath song. Hand of Doom yeah. on one occasion. And, yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, it was a big deal when we were a bit younger, especially me and Miggy. For yeah. us now as well. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something, uh, because they were they were their own people. They weren't manufactured by any, you know. Mm. They were just... They were real. But yeah. Yeah. And Ozzy doesn't care about anyone. He's just doing his own thing all the time. Like the rest of the guys in the band. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think that they've all created such a... You know, just by being themselves and sort of like... Mm -hmm. with I only, for example, having tr trouble with this thing and, you know, cutting the chop at the end, end of it. Doing the sort of like general right arm thing and just going for it. And yeah. just trying to figure out a way to make it happen. And that's what he did, you know. It's very inspirational. Yeah, on, on various levels. So. so for the album, with the names, the titles of the songs on the album, mm -hmm. now I'll be honest with you, when they first came out, I was like, what do half of these words mean? Oh. And then I looked them up and I was like, okay, some oh. of them I think are like Roman and Greek words. And I looked into the, what they mean. One of them was like a, t a bottle that you cry tears into. Like a and Yeah, and you leave it at a grave. I thought that was beautiful. And, you Which know. doesn't necessarily even, uh, what they're saying is yeah. just a myth that it doesn't necessarily exist. Oh, but, you know, a, I was wondering I, I, if it was I, I a thought, thing. I thought the concept is really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Save, save one's tears. Yeah, it's beautiful because like at home, you know, we just have the, the flowers and stuff like that. And I thought that was a thing they did and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, but it's what you can always think in terms of different kinds of sadness, you know, different sad parts of your life, how you save them. Everybody puts their sadness, their little sad stories and melancholy moments away somewhere. They Into love them something. Away some, something. Yeah. So I just thought that that fits. And, and, and there's a personal angle, of course, as well. I always have some sort of... It means it's not just, you, it just yeah. doesn't come out of here. Hey, that's sort of something. Yeah, that's different. what I was wondering. I was like, you know, were you reading something at the time for like... like I think it's always a combination. Yeah. To be. And then, then at times there's... Um, uh, like um, soliloquy, the word. It's words that I learned that just feel so nice mm -hmm. when yeah. you say them. Yeah. Uh, that's in neo noir. I used that word. That was yes. completely new to me. So, so, um, so it's and then flash dance macabre, you know, which. Oh yeah. I thought that you know it could have been the name of the album, but it would have been a bit too tongue tongue in cheek, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I like it. Yeah. But uh, 
It's, it's, once again, it's that fine line. It's not nice to play around with words, and I think it might be a bit easier for me because it's not my native mm -hmm. language, you know. So yeah. I'm not stuck with certain things, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I can fail miserably. And, You're teaching and, me things anyway. I'm learning. I'm, I'm like, what is, is this English? What is this? <laughs> A, you know, well, yeah, there, there are a couple of made-up words, yeah. like the Chernobyl. Thing. Oh, that's made up word, isn't it? I'm there googling it. So, yeah, because you, can, you know, it's like um, Finnish it means Threnody, so it's like, okay. a song, like a sad song usually, I think, performed yep. by a solo singer, like an uh, But I, 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 my idea behind that was uh, like if you have a utopia and dystopia, and I, then I thought about Chernobyl, which is the realm of the sad song. That's so, the, that's the way you hide the dying song. Um, sort of thing, you know, and that, that's how I felt that the world was when we were in COVID. Yeah. So I felt that people just do stupid things and keep on doing it really proudly, knowing that everything's just kind of pear shaped. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's what I wanted to say about the album as well. Like, would I be right in saying that basically it's kind of like it's saying, like, when all things are doomed, there's still hope. And, like, for some of the songs, it was, I'm trying to think now what it was, it just kind of made me think, especially at the time when I was hearing it and even now like during lockdown it was like even though things are all bad you know there's always going to be hope there's always going to be like oh it could be i'm not sure if it was that hopeful i, I was maybe maybe when you go past that stage <laughs> and, and you think in terms of um that quite a lot of the silly things that we human beings do are quite endearing in their silliness mm -hmm. and then the fact that that um that we have to make mistakes to you know grow grow as people and you know that's necessary so basically the more mistakes the more you learn that's true and the only thing we try to keep on doing is, uh, is not to repeat the same mistakes because yeah. then you keep on learning the same thing again and keep on forgetting it and doing it again so that doesn't make that's sense. me <laughs> well, sometimes think, a bit of a mix but you know, know sometimes know. you learn sometimes well, you do like the same thing a few times yeah <laughs> but I, I think that that's an endearing quality to to human beings as well you know that we know that the planet is going down the hill and we're still fucking it up it's like, it's yeah. Like, it, it, it sounds like a you know a comedy series. Yeah. You know, well, I wouldn't call it hope. Um, was maybe celebrating the fact that you know maybe the our superpowers, human beings, is the thing to, you know is the is the time to fuck shit up. You know, Seems and we to be. Do, yeah. and we do it royally. Since your time as the frontman of him, and even now still with the release of your solo album Neon mm -hmm. Noir. Your music has amassed a large following within the goth and gothic subculture. What does goth sort of personally mean to you? Cats. Cats. <laughs> oh, well. uh, I don't think it's about individuality. For me, it's punk rock. You know, it's like, it's like that. <laughs> you know, in a very positive sense. But it's being yourself yeah. and doing yeah. your own thing. And but as as we briefly touched on the topic, you know, in different countries it's very different. In some places it's more of a fashion state. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I've actually never talked about it like that. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. strange because yeah, we've yeah. seen it because we went to, yeah. we've been to like LA and Germany yeah. and UK, but we've never actually really like talked about it. Oh yeah, like, and, and it's no, so no, different. Yeah, none of it's a, it's a negative, you know, it's just no. a different way of... Yeah, it's just all completely different yeah. fashions even, like music, very taste, much so. everything, and yeah. And like, uh, have you been to Gothic wave traffic? Not yet. Yeah. Next because year. That was heavy duty compared to Metal Luna. Mm -hmm. Because that was like all vampires and it was really people were really dressing up and it was really over the top. I, I remember it was back in maybe '97 when we went there for the first time and uh, and uh, it's well I didn't have a cell phone camera at the time, but I remember a, a fellow dressed up as like Bella Lugosi from from uh, whatever Dracula. <laughs> oh, amazing! And he had full like do. But it is more like costume. You but it was yeah. even even a hot dog. Ketchup <laughs> was. Oh. Like, down like blood. Oh, my favorite. I, I thought that that shot would have sort of like encapsulated oh, yeah. everything about it. Yeah, beautifully thing. poetic. Okay, you're never yeah. going to forget that. Yeah, the yeah, captures yeah. in your head. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I always love that, like seeing people dressed in like full gothic stuff. And like, for example, like Connor had black ice cream at Maraluna. Right. And it's always so funny to <laughs> see, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like anytime Connor's like doing anything, like we went to Japan and he's there with like all the pink stuff and like eating like pink ice cream. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, it's just something about it that just. It's Is, but isn't there a god scene in Japan? I, I think yeah. there would have been. It, yeah, there because is. Because they're so heartfelt, it's like they're 70s scene. You mm -hmm. know, the yeah. guys that look exactly like they're, like they're from 72. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, from the cover of Let's Apple in you know, 3 or whatever. Yeah, but we, when we were there, there was like um, a March like fashion walk thing. Yeah. So, like, hundreds of gods just walked by and it was like. But at home, you know, yeah. back where, where we're from. It's not not really a thing. Like there's a few guts around, but it's not really a huge scene there. So we love like even coming here, 
like we're seeing a lot of alternative people, people like fully tattooed and like yeah. dressed in alternative fashion and at home we just don't have that. So for us we're like, oh, wow. <laughs> so oh, it's good that you do it. It's not easy, I think. So speaking of fashion, over the years you've had some very iconic looks from fur coats and leather pants to hats and scarves and blazers with heavy eyeshadow. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say that you're a style icon. So is there anything or any one in particular that inspired your personal style? I think it's all about the project form and uh, Edgar Allan Poe film, films, you know, with uh, Vincent Price and all that stuff, mm -hmm. with the top hats and all that. That was cool stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I saw all that stuff at the same time when there was like uh, the, um, the, the, uh, uh, some of the Johnny Depp films, Tim Burton ones, mm -hmm. you know, that was that time, and then From Hell and all that stuff, so, so there was a lot of that stuff happening at the same time, I think, mid-90s, maybe. The Crow happened. Oh, The Crow, oh, yeah. The crow. Gotta yeah. get that, the, the black trench coat going, and yeah. the black yeah. lipstick. Yeah, that was a big deal, so I think it comes from all of those, I mean, and real religious, there's a, all, in all these iterations, he's been a cool motherfucker, you know, like, <laughs> with his white suit. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Dominion. Yeah. They're very iconic and they're very Fair. sort of like timeless. And, yeah. and, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's great thing. Like even as far as makeup goes though, like when you picked up the eyeliner, like was that just like did you just think of it yourself or was like what made you do that? I think it was like a Bowen thing, you know, okay. like seventies so mid bit Bowie, a bit of a respect called Dragon in helicopters. Okay. And helicopters the Swedish band when they came out. Well, the guy who was clearly inspired by Hanoi Rocks. Ah, uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah. There's always connections somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, I, I think it was uh, more about when, when I was younger. It was about testing the limits, testing, you know, meeting new photographers and makeup artists and, and uh, the yeah. stylists. Yeah. Well, the scene, sort of like what works, what doesn't. Yeah. You know, it's, I said, I'm still not sure what works or what doesn't, but you know, I'm getting it. Oh, it all, it all worked. It all worked. We can promise you that. Some people, I think, <laughs> can just pull off anything in that sense. Like, but for us, like, I think you're definitely the inspiration for us. Like wearing eyeliner, like even like myself and Connor, the both of us, we started wearing eyeliner because we saw you wearing eyeliner, <laughs> like, oh, and now it just kind of, and now I just kept <laughs> putting on the eyeliner and just kept going and going. Yeah, yeah. And never wash it off. That's my, that's my you know, tip. I'm always tempted to just, just leave, it leave it on. Leave it on because it looks, it looks the best. It's better than yeah, yeah, You can't do it, you know, even the best makeup artists can't do it. Pull off the, like, the four day. Actual so one in love. Yeah, it doesn't have to do the cure thing. It doesn't have to go that far. Yeah. But uh, just that it smudges around. Like, I fear this is going to start drowning. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. We're going to start shouting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My last uh, question is, um, so it's about the sheep. Right. <laughs> So the sheep in the low end video. Yeah. We're wondering, do you have a name for the sheep? And well, why the is the sheep did have a name? Okay. Uh, she was called uh, Susie, uh, okay. which in Finland the whole two words would be Susie Musta, which is pitch black. So you would call the oh. sheep pitch. Ah, so, pitch. Okay. So that was the name. Of her. There was two. Oh, sheep. Oh, her. Okay. Yeah, so there was, yeah. uh, there was a there was two. There was a stunt double. <gasps> stunt double. Oh, no. But we did. Uh, she wasn't involved. She was a bit younger. Yeah. But she was there as a spare because most of these sheep are when they decide that they're not going to do something, then they don't. So, uh, so you have to make sure to have a backup sheep in yeah, case that was yeah, misbehaved. Yeah, yeah, no, That's it. really cool to know because yeah, I, I remember I watched the video on a live stream and people were like, the sheep. <laughs> I love the sheep and this was the whole thing. Everyone just was like, oh I love the sheep and they keep bringing it up and like let's watch the video. You know, international symbol for outsider. You know, just yeah, like what we are, so yes. we've a great surprise. Bring out the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> this way. It is. It is an Irish now, sheep. Right. The thing is, it's not black. We it was no. white, and we tried to dye it, and it just fell away went grey. But this is just uh, the. In all black sheep, they go grey as well. Oh, okay, it's, it's, it's just old. Just old. It's just old. <laughs> <laughs> I was hanging. Aldi. Poor Aldi. <laughs> Poor Aldi. Okay, so thank you so much, Little, for sitting down and speaking to 
to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak to Villa today and for you at home, make sure to stream Neon Noir or Catch Villa on tour in the United States. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and until next time, see, see you in your nightmares. <laughs>